Who's the main audience for Lexica? Let's say the main target group for Lexica would be um, translators who use uh, translation platforms for their work, for vendors or for translation buyers. And uh, the bigger umbrella, let's say, for us at least, is the translation buyers who are interested in improving their quality of their localization programs. How would users mainly benefit from using Lexica? The main um, benefits are threefold. Mm -hmm. So one benefit is that you get uh, QA checks which are targeted to each specific locale that you're working with. So we don't uh, use uh, consistency checks only, for example, where you have a number in the source text and you try to find the same number in the target. But we take into account specific grammatical rules that apply to each of the languages we support. That means that you get less noise when you run a quality check. And that means, by extension, that you spend less time trying to figure out what is an actual problem and what isn't. So your productivity increases because of that. Uh, the higher accuracy rate because of these locale specific checks means that you can be more productive. Uh, you can cover a lot more texts uh, in the same amount of time. And you can also feel more confidence that whatever corrections you make are actually needed. And you also have a safety net in the background. So whenever you, as a reviewer, you make any changes in the text, uh, if you accidentally introduce a new error, uh, Lexica is going to catch it on the fly. So one of the additional benefits, let's say, is that you have the QA as a translator, not just as a reviewer. So while you're translating, you get live QA while you're doing your work. Uh, the traditional model of QA is that somebody translates and then a proofreader or an editor comes afterwards to make any corrections with a QA report. But uh, we've gone a step up the process. So now everyone is a bit more involved, including the translators. What types of QA checks does your tool offer? So apart from the standard matching consistency pattern checks that you would find in any QA tool, we go into a lot more depth uh, about localization rules and grammatical rules for each language. So whenever it comes to conversion uh, of dates, of numbers, of, um, I don't know, uh, currencies and their symbols, etc., we go beyond the one-to-one -one matching. Uh, allowing for multiple patterns to be accepted depending on the grammatical rules of that language. So you could be accepting, for example, the symbol for a dollar or the, uni you, the international abbreviation, like USD for a dollar. Um, but you could have potentially other conversion styles too. So you could write the word dollar in a translation rather than the symbol. And a lot of the times, if you can't find a match for the symbol, then you would get a false warning there telling you that, you know, the currency is not there, whereas you have written it as a word, for example. So the idea is that for a number of conversions like that, where grammatical rules come into play, we can save a lot of time by uh, eliminating all these false warnings. And that way you can be more confident that whenever you get a warning, it is actually something that you need to look at. Uh, the idea behind this is that we are trying to reduce the amount of time that you spend doing QA, because a lot of the times traditional approaches mean reading through hundreds of rows of a QA report, and it also takes a lot of reading, so which is a lot of effort and time that you need to spend trying to figure out where the error is, for example. So instead of doing all that, we just visualize the area within the segment where you're actually working in the translation editor, uh, telling you with a little tooltip that pops up, this is what the problem is. So then you very quickly can decide whether there is something that needs to be fixed or not. Most of the times the warnings will be something that needs to be fixed. There will always be, of course, something that is is false positive. I mean, this is inevitable. Uh, there can never be 100% accuracy about 
any QA that you run. But the idea is that you reduce the noise so much that by the end of the process, you have saved a lot of time doing that. And you feel more confident that your translation is higher quality. How to evaluate the success of LQA? So you could perhaps review uh, through uh, Lexico one of the translations that supposedly has been completed and revised already. And then you can see if there are any other warnings that Lexico might uh, bring up, for example, through this review. Uh, By comparing uh, current projects versus older projects, you can also get an idea, uh, a better idea, uh, of what the performance of your vendors are. So what translators, for example, are performing better in a certain language pair. Uh, that uh, uh, will give you a bit more intelligence about the way that you're using your resources. And also, over a period of time, you can collect the data that you get from these QA reports and say, okay, I see that the performance of my, I don't know, German translators is somewhat slipping. So maybe I need to find new people. Or why does the Spanish language pair do better Uh, than the French language pair for the same type of content, for example. So you can use this uh, information to make uh, value judgments, let's say, overall, for uh, the whole operation. Uh, uh, On a more detailed level, you can also see a breakdown of what types of errors are more popular or more common uh, when a translation is done, because we always keep track of the types of errors that have been found in the translation. And also, we keep track of how many of those have been fixed and how many of those have been ignored. And that way you know what the percentage, for example, might be of the actions that a reviewer has taken. So that way, over a period of time, you can collect enough information to have a better idea of how your quality program is working. How can we ensure that translations are culturally appropriate and sensitive? This is something that uh, the human reviser will need to take care of. There's no exception to that. There's no technology right now that can uh, account for cultural sensitivity or something like that, even in the case of the best machine translation engines. So our idea uh, in the translation process is that the automated checks we provide are there to make the translators and the revisers job easier. It's not there to basically make decisions for them. We can give a warning about something that we feel is wrong based on the rules that we know about the language, but then it's the decision of a reviser, for example, to figure out whether something is accurate and whether it matches the tone of voice that needs to be used or the style guides that a certain company might be using. So these are decisions that go beyond the automated checks. These should be taken care of by the human in the loop, let's say. Anything else you'd like to mention to our audience? We'd be very happy to help anyone who would like to test the Lexica integration in Crowdin Editor. Uh, we offer a, a, period, a trial period, let's say, which can be quite extensive depending on your needs. Uh, in order to make sure that everything works properly for you. And we'll be very happy to have an open channel uh, communication, even have a demo to show you exactly how things work so that you have no questions before you decide whether you want to use it or not. We can provide instructions for people to sign on. It's a very simple process. It takes like two minutes to do it. And then you can have the checks in your editor and try it out and let us know what you think. I mean, we're very keen to have feedback about this. You don't know you need it until you actually use it. We we like to hope that the way that the warnings work in the editor is so intuitive that you will never struggle to learn how to use it. It should take about five minutes to understand what you're doing without us telling you anything, just by looking at the warnings. You know exactly what to do in the editor.